All right, I got a, a weird two shows, <laughs> two very out of nowhere shows for this week, where uh, you know every once in a while we have somebody leave us comments on YouTube who's a super duper expert on whatever given show. Like I was just showing you somebody just posted a bunch on our Jack Benny episode talking about Jack Benny and it's like, oh, that's cool, you know? Sure, it's always interesting. I mean, it's always hard to find somebody who uh, is an expert on a show who's also polite about it. They always gotta throw in some jab about how, you know, you guys clearly didn't do your research. And it's like, yeah, maybe not. I mean, that's what happens when you watch a different show every week. But people who just stop in, they obviously don't know that that's what we're doing, that we're, you know, we're learning along with you. It's, it's uh, educational. So yeah, we make some mistakes. But, uh, but overall, it's still, it's nice when people drop some info about things that we didn't know. And this guy actually was nice. He commented on our ALF episode uh, which if anybody wants to find it, the easiest way is if you search for Revisiting Project ALF, because we watched ALF and we also watched that weird TV movie they made in the 90s that was kind of trying to revive ALF. And what he brought up is, you remember how at the end of ALF, it was uh, he was going to get picked up by his friends from Melmac, but then they passed by without him and he was surrounded by the military and that's how that show ended? Yeah, yeah. So he, from what he heard, because also there was all that stuff about how everybody who worked on ALF was losing their minds, particularly Max Wright, who played the dad. He just hated He was he's done. So the idea, I guess, would have been that if they had made season five of ALF, it still would have been kind of the military thing like Project ALF was. That was going to be the next season is change the setting to the military base, get rid of the Tanners because they're all ready to jump off a cliff <laughs> and go on from there. And then that didn't happen at the time. So then they tried again in the 90s with that Project ALF TV movie, which, uh, you know, was better than we thought it was going to be. I remember we kind of liked it. But apparently that was intended, again, to be one of the many attempts to bring ALF back. But the reason this guy said that they didn't is because ABC that aired that had just signed up to uh, run a show called Aliens in the Family that... Yeah, right... <laughs> This is yeah. Mm. <laughs> like... I'm not saying anything, but that's a grimace. <laughs> but yeah, the, apparently this show, Aliens in the Family, was too similar to Alf, so they didn't want to run two Alf-type shows at once, and this thing got canceled in eight episodes. But immediately, this set off my, you know, obscure TV alarm because 1996 ABC. I definitely should have heard of this. It reminds me of uh, when our good friend Random Lad told us about that show, The Duck Factory, with uh, Jim Carrey in it. Mm -hmm. It's like, how did I not know about this? Similar here, because uh, Aliens in the Family, I guess what it kind of makes me think of, it's, uh, you know, it's live action, but it has aliens in it. And I think it's probably, I don't know for sure, but right before that, in the early 90s, there was... That show Dinosaurs, did you ever see that show? Where it's like a sitcom with a whole family, but they're all people in dinosaur suits. Uh, can't say I know that one. Yeah, but probably for an adult at the time, it was not uh, at all known. But for kids... Not top on the agenda. Yeah. For kids, though, it was really popular. It ran for a few years, and it was pretty good. It was actually really dark and weird. It ended with... Uh, the comets coming down to, uh, to kill all the dinosaurs. <laughs> but before that, it was just like a generic, it was just the honeymooners, but with dinosaurs. <laughs> you know, it was just a sitcom. Here's the husband, here's the wife. And uh, I guess it had kids too. But, uh, but I, I got to suspect that that was, because that show was popular, I think is probably why ABC tried with Aliens in the Family. But in this case, yeah, ran eight, eight episodes and just died. So I just thought, yeah, maybe it's terrible. Who knows? But just it's just the fact that I never knew what this was ever. I was like, well, all right, good enough. Let's check it out. Let's watch an episode of Aliens in the Family. So we're going to do that first, but alongside that, when I was looking it up, there's Aliens in the Family, 1996, but there were occasional passing references to another show called Aliens in the Family from 1987. And that's even more obscure and weird and has its own story behind it. But uh, we can get into that after. We'll do the 1996 one first and uh, see what we think of it. And then I'll give you the lowdown on the mysterious 1987. Because that one's extra weird. Like when you go on Wikipedia and look something up, if there's two things with the same name, it'll have a disambiguation section. So it should have said, this is the entry for Aliens in the Family 1996. But perhaps you were looking for Aliens in the Family 1987. 
but that doesn't exist. There is no entry for the other aliens in the family. So, so we'll get into that second. But first off, Aliens in the Family is an American science fantasy sitcom that aired on ABC in 1996 for eight episodes. It was conceived as part of its TGIF lineup. That's another thing. I don't know how aware you are of that. That was a huge deal when I was a kid. Was TGI. It, wasn't that, thank God it's Friday or... Right. Whatever. Or they, I guess because of they don't want uh, blasphemous associations, they also sometimes said, thank goodness it's funny. Kind of, oh. like, kind of like how Kentucky Fried Chicken sometimes uh, tried to pretend it was kitchen fresh chicken. <laughs> you know, they just changed these things to, to try to... But that was a big deal when I was a dumb kid because it was all garbage. It was like full house and step by step and stuff. But that was always like, yeah, TGIF is on. Let's watch it. But again... If this thing was part of TGIF, you could have knocked me down with a feather because I never heard of it. So the show was about a single dad who's abducted by a single alien mom. <laughs> the two fall in love, they get married, and then they try to live a normal life on Earth as a mixed family, partially human, partially alien. The only upside to this is, who knows, maybe it's great, but the only apparent upside is that Brian Henson, son of Jim Henson, was a co-executive producer, and the show used puppets made by Jim Henson's Creature Shop. So at the very least, the puppets will be good. But the show premiered March 15th, 1996, and then ABC pulled the series from its TGIF lineup after two weeks and instead just replaced it by airing reruns of other TGIF shows. They figured that was a better idea than continuing to run this thing. The show did not return for over four months and then they aired the rest of its episodes on Saturday mornings in the summer of 1996. And that was the end of this show. So uh, I got a, an episode that I believe somebody just taped off TV because the quality is not that good. And uh, I apologize in advance for making you watch this. <laughs> well, and you're in the same era, I think, when Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah, when was did it, that? Was it later? Because if it's in the same time frame... They'd have a hard, they, these new, this group would have a hard road to follow. We did do an episode on that, but of course I don't remember the details. Oh, you're right, it originally started airing January 1996. Mm -hmm. And as we discussed in that episode, that show's great. Yeah, that show's fabulous. And anybody who's uh, in that same time frame would have to live up to those standards. And even like I was saying, even the show that came before this, the Dinosaurs show that was just a dinosaur family that were also people in suits surprisingly okay it wasn't bad so and like we said in the elf episode elf was pretty good too in a weird way all of these shows are kind of good but this one apparently wasn't because after two weeks they were like we would rather run a rerun of full house than we would then air this so let's put it on a kids morning show because yeah. uh hey as i said last week so many people just have the idea that kids you have to dumb it down for kids which i totally disagree with of course you don't have to but that's the thing if it doesn't work for prime time or whatever hey just throw it on saturday morning tv they'll yeah. watch anything yeah i mean and and it's true i mean <laughs> you know it would be nice if kids shows treated kids better but they didn't and they don't have to because yeah we we literally would watch anything on on the weekends so uh, aliens in the family episode one anybody wants to watch this with us it is on youtube and it's called meet the brodies So, yeah, uh, terrible. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there was, and I already forgot what it was. I was trying to remember because there was only one line that made me snicker a little. It's like this obnoxious baby character that talks like this. I am a fucking alien. And uh, it called the babysitter something like, you know, entertain me, boring rube, <laughs> something like that. But it's, uh, anyway, that was it, though. That was the only thing that was even remotely close to a joke. And as you said, the, uh, like, the mothers in these things are all hot babes, well, and we still can't explain why the aliens really look like aliens with big buggy eyes and purplish skin, and yet she is gorgeous with just a little bit of this stuff at the edges of her hairline that makes her look like Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, conceptually very confusing, because like I remember we said in ALF, like we watched the first episode, but... You didn't really need to. It was very clear. Or Third Rock from the Sun, same thing. Like Technically, there is an episode about them arriving on Earth, but you didn't need it. Like The, the premise in, in the more classic shows is, is evident. 
where here it was confusing the whole way. So it's, it's a Brady Bunch thing. There's the human family and the alien family, and they're living together. But it's not clear at all if they're trying to hide the aliens or not. It seems like they are, but then a lot of people seem to know about the aliens. But I thought, well, maybe it's just the mom's babysitter that she hired and the mom's friends and, you know, the, the locals or whatever. But then the human daughter's friend comes over and she pushes the alien brother in the closet. And I guess that was just because she doesn't like him as a brother. But I thought that was, you're not allowed to see my alien brother. But then later they're at this country club and the alien brother's just walking in and walking along and they make a joke about how he breathes carbon dioxide. And, and it's like, what the hell is even going on? Cause yeah, and, and he dances with the girl and everybody's sitting there having their little golf club drinks or meals or whatever and nobody's raising an eyebrow or saying who the heck is that oh look at that guy he's strange looking no comment at all totally acceptable yeah and this is one of those cases where you really do need to explain that it's literally an international affair it's like you got to have the entire world agree that there's just going to be an alien family in middle america i mean just imagine what they'd be doing in like other countries and stuff we find out aliens are real and they live in the states and everyone is just pretending that this is normal just even conceptually very muddled and doesn't doesn't make any sense and then of course as jokes go it made me think of how uh, i was really unfair to my favorite martian like before we put it on i just presumed wrongly that an old show is gonna have corny jokes and it's probably not going to be that funny and then we watched it, and it was actually really pretty well written and quite clever. And the only thing that kind of ages it is its uh, its take on women was really weird, that the women were all wearing baby dolls and just were idiots. <laughs> but the jokes were good, and the writing was pretty good. This show had the, the writing that I thought my favorite Martian was going to have, like their version of an alien, is literally to talk like this. And the jokes are just... just forced. Yeah. Very, very forced really yeah just not even close to even being a joke and uh yeah and i don't know what was going on with the laugh track but the laugh track just stopped part way through <laughs> and it's almost like the people making the show were like we cannot in good conscience keep adding a laugh track to this when nothing is happening and it's just not funny because this was the version that was on tv like sometimes we find these weird you know the uh, versions they send to networks and stuff that sometimes are missing things not in this case, because this had all the 1996 commercials for Ace Ventura and the Rocketeer and stuff. So this was what aired, and uh, yeah, awful. Just an awful show. I guess the one thing, oh, the other thing I would say I did like about it, but it's a waste of their talents, is uh, the Jim Henson puppets. Like, I love that stuff because it's so rare now. Nowadays, they would all be computer graphics. Like, this is just a, a lost art. So I love seeing that stuff. I love the old Jim Henson movies, like Labyrinth is one of my favorite movies. Uh, and, you know, even just the Muppet Show and stuff. But this was just such a waste, what yeah. a waste of their talent. And even for Saturday morning viewing, for older kids, I, I, I don't know that older kids would buy that. But now I could see little, small children, three years old, four years old, five years old, just loving that little baby. I found the little baby rather obnoxious, but then I'm a grown-up. But as a, I could see little, very young children without even following the show or the storyline would be very drawn to that little baby. I think though, yeah, again, that's one of those things where if I ever showed you the, um, the dinosaur show, let me just actually, why don't I just see if there's a clip because, uh, the dinosaurs show was very similar, even to the point of having the baby. And I can't say that the baby in dinosaurs was good. It was also annoying, but it was way better than that. So even this, this thing they're doing is just a worse version. Okay, dinosaurs. Baby Sinclair has too much sugar. A minute and a half. How bad could this be? Looks like an evil little critter, even though the other baby didn't look evil, but this guy does. It's even already it's funnier. I mean, it's just that the baby's home alone, so he sneaks over to the fridge and he's covered his face in ice cream. You know, it's the same basic thing, except this baby is at least likable on some mm -hmm. level. <laughs> Where that other baby was just literally, I am the baby. I mean, meh. So yeah, I mean, again, this is not like the height of comedy, but <laughs> but these uh, aliens in the family guys, this is clearly what they were going for. So somebody else already did it the right way, and they just did a bad version of this. God. 
<laughs> yeah, and like the puppetry in Dinosaurs is clearly a lot worse, but the show is a lot better. And yeah, the puppets just don't, they don't carry anything in that other show, not even remotely. So, uh, so anyway, I dare you, YouTube commenters, I dare you to A, remember this show, <laughs> and then B, to post that, how dare we criticize it because it was a comedy classic. I dare you. <laughs> So we'll check in on that okay. uh, as the weeks and months go by. <laughs> so then again, because of that show, like I said, I kept seeing these references to uh, Aliens in the Family 1987. And then I was double intrigued because it was not easy to figure out what that was. It, it was like obvious that it, it was a thing. But just, uh, I mean, you know, to be honest, I don't, it's not like I'm going to the library and dusting off an old tome and going through the Dewey Decimal System, really you just got to Google these shows and you can find out the basic information about them is really all it, it takes. And that wasn't happening in this case. It's like you'd Google it and nothing would happen. Nothing would come up. And it's like, what is going on? So I did have to dig a little deeper, still just on my computer. <laughs> Again, I didn't have to travel to the Himalayas. But what I learned is Aliens in the Family was a 1985 novel by Margaret Mayhew about a girl named Jake Raven who is expecting to dislike her new stepsister, but ends up helping them protect an alien from another dimension as he flees from mysterious pursuers with the ability to alter time. So it's another thing where she's, you know, like uh, families, but I think the other half of the family is not an alien, just the other half of the family is in, in contact with an alien and is trying to, to save them or protect them or something. So uh, then the next thing I learned that I sort of helped explain this a bit you know, obviously we're from Canada. We don't know a whole ton about what's going on in England with just whatever we get filtered over here. There's obviously all kinds of shows and stuff that we just never even heard of. I mean, famously, one of our early episodes was Billy Bunter. Every, every person from the UK knows Billy Bunter. It was new to us, you know, that's a good example. So this is one of those things. This version of Aliens in the Family, based on the 1985 novel, aired on the BBC in 1987 for six episodes, which unlike the failure of the 1996 one getting cancelled in eight episodes six episodes is totally normal for the bbc it was the whole thing they did the whole novel sequentially and completed the project and it doesn't seem like anybody you know like it, they this one doesn't appear to have been disliked it just is just forgotten just i don't know it just slipped through the cracks because uh the only version of it that even exists is somebody uploaded to youtube they just had all six episodes taped on a VHS tape. They just uploaded the whole tape. It's not even in the right order. Somebody else had to go in, snip the episodes out, put them in the right order. And it's like if that one person didn't have that, that tape in the back of their closet all this time and then didn't think to digitize it and throw it on YouTube, I don't think there would even be a version of this show available. That was it. And there were no... You know, sometimes I go look up comments and stuff to see what people of the era thought of or people that remember the show, whatever, any kind of little anecdote. And I couldn't find anything. Also, for some reason, the guy who uploaded the original version turned off the comments on YouTube, so that didn't help. So I had to dig even deeper on that. So we have our first ever Reddit comment. Uh, Reddit user Gogo Golden Syrup commented about this show only one month ago. Somebody posted something about this show and only one person replied, and it was this person. And I'm going to read this in an obnoxious British accent because uh, sometimes you can see the accent when you're reading, you know, because we're from Canada. We obviously have a lot of the British spellings, but we're like a mix, you know, half British, half American. This thing is so British. It's got the U in favorite, and program is spelled with two M's and an E at the end. <laughs> it's the most British thing ever. So this person said, one of my favorite childhood memories Wait, let me start that again. One of my favorite childhood memories is of watching this program on VHS at my gran... Uh, why am I... This is just insulting. One of my favorite childhood memories is of watching this program on VHS at my granny's house. When we first meet the alien, who I guess his name is Bond, me arsehole cousin ran screaming out of the... Li uh, <laughs> ran screaming out of the living room. So, so I guess when we see Bond, when he shows up, I don't know if he's scary, I guess. Scary enough to make a small British child run screaming out of the room. And that's it. That's the only information I could find about this. It's wild. Like, how is there not a Wikipedia entry? How is there nothing about this show? 
but just based on the fact that it's based on a novel and that it was a self-contained six episode basically miniseries it's still a kid show but i suspect this is going to be a lot better than what we just watched i mean it can't be worse right I would expect it to be better, especially the British, from what I've seen of children's TV or children's movies, they really respect their children, and they've got some wonderful, wonderful child actors yeah. who don't, who don't, uh, they're, they're not dumbed down, they're just fabulous. So I would expect that if they were doing something for a, a children's programming, it's probably pretty darn good. It's part one of Aliens in the Family, so get the sign up quick. Here it is. So yeah, I would uh, conservatively say that that was a million times better. <laughs> I won't even say conservatively, I'll say liberally. Yeah. That was excellent. No comparison at all. And they've set you up to watch number two, the way they finished that. Oh man, you, could, you couldn't wait until next week for that next one to come on. Yeah, I mean, there's very few... I mean, we really don't know much about British kids shows. I guess Billy Bunter was probably technically a kids show, but I think that might be it. Like, we know a medium amount of shows for adults, but we haven't seen a lot of British kids shows. But if that's representative of them, they definitely... Well, it's like you always say about, you know, it would be nice if kids shows treated kids like they weren't dumb, but they always treat kids like they're dumb in North America. But that didn't. That was a normal show. No, that that one kept you guessing all the, t like who is Jacqueline? What was the alien going to look like when he hit Earth? What, who is that red ball that keeps following around, giving him instructions? Who's what's this about his sister, who's also going to be on Earth when he's there, but she's going to be an inanimate object that can be moved around? Like wow. <laughs> and, and yeah, and it's not like going out of its way to have to keep your attention all the time it's like hey man pay attention or don't but we're gonna meter this out like they just keep right on moving yeah it, there's none of this uh now just in case you didn't understand this let me throw more of that let me explain it to you no they just and i find this very much with a lot of british shows especially their mysteries and that you're watching them you haven't got a clue half the time of what it is you're watching or why you're watching but it all comes together at the end and then you say Okay, I get that now. That what I was watching was really important, but I just didn't understand the relevance of it. This is this for a kid show is does exactly the same thing. But oh man, as I said to you, if I was a kid watching that, I would love that show. I love it now. And even yeah, like I can't think really of a North American equivalent, especially at the time. But in even in general, that not only are you expected to pay attention. They're like, hey, focus, you know, you're going to have to pay attention to this. But it's like a distinct six-part miniseries, you know, like you got to pay attention for the next month and a half. And uh, if you're too dumb to follow along, too bad, kid. <laughs> you know, like they really are not treating kids like they're dumb, which is so incredibly different feeling from our shows. The other thing I think uh, about this is because, uh, you know, we've been watching all these forgotten shows lately and uh, you know, it's like we were saying with these, these 70s space shows, for example. It's like they're so much worse than Star Trek that it's it's not cool for any show to be forgotten, but it's more understandable. It's like, well, it's no wonder we remember Star Trek and we don't remember the Star Lost, and you know, because it's just much, much worse. And I remember saying, like, yeah, you know, I mean, that's probably what happens with forgotten shows. They don't get forgotten for no reason. They kind of deserve it a little. Where this show... This is like a travesty that this show almost doesn't exist. Like, how come no one cares, BBC? How come no one remembers this show? Why isn't this available somewhere? Why how haven't that you... That show it hasn't been shifted around the world to the British colonies, at least. At the <laughs> yeah. very least. The former British colonies, I should say. But why isn't that a big show in Australia? Why isn't it a big show in Canada? Yeah, or, or that it even ever got... Didn't, didn't even ever get played at all. And yeah, the idea that just some guy happened to have just all the episodes on some tape not even in the correct order that he just dumped on youtube as a big ass file like he didn't even care enough to split them up and curate this in any way and yeah it's like that little gossamer thread if it wasn't for that one guy 
maybe my search for aliens in the family 1987 would have found nothing and it's like that's just like come on man it's not like and again we talked about like the uh the really old doctor who's and like how they used to tape over shows back then but that was the 60s this is the mid 80s i don't know it's just weird it's like you should really care a little bit about if you have shows like this that are in your your archives you know and are really top caliber well done um very simple um scenery but very very effective the children in it are really good. They, they don't dwell on them being spoiled or, you know, you get the impression that the girl, who, who's probably about 12 or 13, really just getting into makeup and looking at boys and all that stuff, but they don't dwell on that. You just get little snippets of it. The little boy, you get snippets of a, of a brother that can be a little bit of a pain for her, but he's very real. They're all very realistic. And I guess, uh, I mean, I guess we described it a bit at the start, but basically what's happening, and in, in especially because it's quite a slow burn, this is really all that happened in this first episode, is this family is, uh, wait, where, where did Jake come from? Was she from a... It seems to me that Jake is the, the father and Jake's mother uh, had either had a relationship or remarried or, or something, and that relationship fell apart. Then he met Philippa, and they've had a family. So Jake is the daughter from a first either marriage or relationship. We don't know which. So, yeah, so they're basically going to meet meet their stepsister, I guess, which even that is an interesting thing, especially for 1987, that Jacqueline is very androgynous the way she dresses and wants to be named Jake. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. But, yeah, like you're saying, their concerns are just like the little brother's like, man, what if she doesn't like me? And I liked that... This is going to, I shouldn't be mean to some random British actress from 1987, but how the, the daughter is like uh, in the mirror just saying like, I hope, I hope Jacqueline isn't prettier than me. Yeah. But it's not like in North America where even a random 12 year old kid would be, you know, a Hollywood actress looking person <laughs> where in a British show, eh, it's just some. They're very oops. normal looking people. Yeah. Just a, just a lump of old British clay. Not Here you go. <laughs> but they're just, they're just very normal looking. Everybody yeah. is very, yeah, just normal. And then uh, alongside it is this alien uh, Bond. What was his Bond. name? Bond. Yeah, yeah. That uh, apparently freaked out that, that one kid in the anecdote. So she <laughs> ran out of the room where all they did, it was kind of a good effect, but just a simple, looks like Voldemort from Harry Potter, just uh, featureless smooth face but he's preparing to come to earth because part of his schooling i guess is to come to earth as a human and you know do some tests and whatever uh, so it's really just him preparing but they they really kind of go through how their culture works and it's uh, very bureaucratic and a lot of uh, make sure you you know even though he doesn't get in trouble for anything just he's so deliberately saying the exact right things at each point that it it definitely has a creepy feeling uh, but then, yeah, at the end of the episode, we see him as, as his human form yeah. on Earth. But only from a distance. Right. But we know that he's going to be very handsome because the pictures that he was looking <laughs> at earlier of the, of the males that he was going to replica, oh, they were all excellent looking, except when they showed the Michael Jackson one, and he wanted to look like that. And there, the other guy, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, that was a little not? weird because I think I saw in there, too, there was, like, you know, Mel Gibson and Michael J. Fox and <laughs> oh, some yeah. various. Some definite stars. <laughs> yeah. It's and weird because uh, the world. Because nowadays it's like, yeah, fuck Michael Jackson, but I don't know what they had against him back then. <laughs> that was a little weird, but whatever. But yeah, even that, that that uh, that slow burn. But I guess that's kind of the greatest compliment I could give it is, it's very rare that we watch any shows for this little you know exploration through TV that we are really like, oh, I'd watch the rest of those. But with this, it's like, yeah, man, I'd watch that. Why not? Especially knowing that it's six episodes and that it's actually going to... Oh, well, I guess that's the other thing is we looked up real quickly the book it was based on. And the design of the book is the same look as uh, The Babysitter's Club or Sweet Valley High. Like just these, you know, young adult books from the 80s that we have here. But those ones are really vapid and <laughs> really lame. So I wonder if because this is based on like our... Obviously, the British TV shows are of a higher caliber than ours in general, but maybe even just British young adult books of the 80s, maybe they're, they're better. Maybe because <laughs> if, if this is based on that book, it's certainly better than, I don't know, I mean, I've read a couple of Sweet Valley Highs in my life, and uh, they're terrible, <laughs> you know, where this seems like it's probably a pretty decent book. Well, it's a very, very decent show. 
really decent. Well done. I would recommend that to anybody, any kid, any adult. And that's the other thing that's, that's the beauty of some of their TV shows. They're not just geared for, oh, let's say ages, I don't know, 10 to 12, 10 to 15. Anybody could watch that show and enjoy it. You know, it's a double irony. I mean, the only reason we're comparing these two shows is because they have the same title. They're obviously different genres, different decades, different countries. There's really nothing about them that's the same. But it's funny that the, the BBC show is a kid's show that an adult could easily watch, whereas the American one was part of that TGIF block that, yeah, every kid watched it, but it was on, you know, Friday night. Like, all the, the grown-ups watched it, too. You know, like, those shows were also kind of intended for an adult audience to watch but it's and it's super dumb <laughs> so it's just funny that the american one is for grown-ups leaning toward kids and that one sucked where this british one is for kids leaning toward adults and is way way better so yeah i mean that's it it's nice that we got through this twisty path yeah, and you know like especially that that first sitcom like i kind of knew going in we're surprised once in a while, but I was like, yeah, this is going to be awful. But that was my only plan, just because that guy brought up this forgotten show. So it's a nice bonus that I just happened to, because of the titles being the same. Like, how would I ever come across that show otherwise? It's like, that's that's like the most forgotten show we've ever we've ever discussed. Like, the weird old shows from the 50s are, are less forgotten than that. That show is like yeah, erased. And what a shame, because that that is a really... Excellent, excellent show. Yeah. Oh, and here I'll just add real quickly at the end that uh, the archive.org entry for this show pointed to a site called Little Gems, the chestnut.com, that does have an entry about this show that mostly just goes over the same basic, uh, here's the basics about it. But a little bit of extra information. The series was directed by Christine Sacombe, who also did Tom's Midnight Garden, and Paul Stone was the producer who also produced, among many other things, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe in 1988. But they were both nominated for a BAFTA award for this production. So I just wanted to mention that because that makes it uh, a little doubly weird to me that uh, they just let this show slip through their fingers and that it's not available anywhere and has almost disappeared. Because uh, apparently at the time, people did recognize and did nominate this for, a show, or for, for BAFTAs. They were like, oh, that is good. Now let's never speak of it again. <laughs> so yeah, just throw that in at the end. And yeah, also, I mean, as our ultimate, uh, you know, that we recommend the show, we downloaded all the other episodes, and just as we, as we do other things in the coming weeks, just outside of the podcast, just for ourselves, we're just going to watch an episode every week until we watch this whole show, which uh, that's pretty rare. I mean, I know we went back and watched an extra episode of Jack Benny. I think that might be the only show... These are the only two, I think, that we've really held on to. There might be something else. Maybe I'm forgetting. But yeah, there might be one or two, but I, I don't really remember. But this one, for sure, yeah. is definitely worthwhile checking out the rest of the episodes to see what's going on with them, because just in episode one, there's a few strings hanging, and I want to see what happens. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, again, archive.org. Just search for Aliens in the Family BBC, and they will all come up. Well, well, that was unexpected, <laughs> or, or I should say that was half fully expected and half <laughs> unexpected. Very, very big, pleasant surprise. Yeah.